In December 2018, I set out on a journey to grow mushrooms in my two-car garage at my house. I stuck with it. I persevered. I learnt all I could. I pushed through the night, through the heat, through the cold, through equipment failure, through failed crops, through just about every problem a grower can face. Until it came down to this. I can sport is expanding! Yes! Look at that! Just look at that! Seriously, look at that facility! I haven't seen anything this attractive since like pre-2020, right? You know, 2020 when everything just got a bit ugly and people still call it good looking, but it's not really. It's actually quite ugly. Yeah, this ain't that. This is good looking. Look at that. Just look at it. You see behind me is our new facility. We are going to be growing our mushrooms in. It's a 200 square metre, um, obviously concrete floored workshop. There's five bays there. There's an insulated workshop here. One of those bays that's open is on the insulated side. And down the end there, there's a 150 square metre pole barn, we call it in New Zealand. So we're going to be using that for all our substrate preparation. That gives me about 350 square metres to grow tasty mushrooms. So let me take you guys for a walk around this new facility we are going to be building. Um, here's the entrance door just on the left here, and that goes into my office, sorry, that's a bit dark there. And if we walk down the edge of this building here, um, you can see one door here. So that goes into the insulated area. We'll come in here and have a good look around shortly. And then we've got uh, two doors, three doors, four doors, five doors. And out the back here, let's take you for a wee walk. This is where our substrate preparation area is going to be. So we come out the back here, you can see I'm already doing a bit of work here, doing some grinding out of the foundation for drains and just boxing up. We're going to put concrete pads in here, boxing up. The good part about out here is we've actually got a big three-phase conduit coming out on the wall here. Um, so that there is a big three-phase line that's coming into here, three-phase power. So we're going to be running all our mixing equipment here, just on a concrete floor. We'll prepare all our bags out here. And after our bags have been prepared out here, they'll get sterilised out here, and then they'll get taken through um, into where all the magic happens, which is in this building right here. So we are in the area that we're going to be used as a fruiting room right now. Well, the fruiting rooms are going to be in here. Just open these doors. Let's just do a wee spin round, eh? So, there's a lot of stuff in here right now where um, nothing's really organised yet because it's all got to come out because we're going to re-epoxy the floors. Um, when building a mushroom farm, start with the floor, you grow a top, um, make sure that's good and correct first. I made the mistake of not doing it last time. Um, so this time we're just doing it a bit properly. You can see this mark here on the ground here, that's where the fruiting rooms are going to come out to and they're going to go right back to that wall back there and it gives me about 40 square metres of fruiting room. You can see there's um, channel cut right there and that's where our drain's going to go. Um, so yeah, having a drain this time, that is perfect. But the fruiting rooms aren't going to go back to the wall or to the edge. You can actually see there's a mark there. I don't know if you can just see it. So down there, that little mark there, that's where they're going to come out to. So you're going to be able to walk all around the perimeter of the fruiting room and that is so you can get around the edge. There's going to be um, some uh, reasonably complex um, HVAC ventilation not really HVAC, but smaller, um, coming in and going out of these fruiting chambers. Um, they're going to go to a preconditioning room, which we're going to put right behind that wall back there. Um, if we come down here a bit, you can see um, you can see the quality of the wiring in this place. We'll show you a bit more of that later. Um, more power coming in here, three phase. Um, it's got an alarm, there's an electric fence on the wall, it's all electrified, and we come through to this area here. So in the insulated part of it, um, I'll just do you a wee spin around here. All these walls have some pretty heavy duty insulation in it. I mean, just look at this cable management up here, right? it's just absolutely extraordinary. Um, we've got power points even there, we've got a heat pump already in here. We've got a heat pump. Markings on the floor here, these markings on the floor, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, this marking here is going, in here it's going to be incubation. Heat pump already, three phase over there, we don't really need three phase incubation, but why not three phase hair dry, go on there. Dry my hair really quickly in the morning. Um, and here is going to be my lab, right in the middle. Um, yeah, it's a lab. Uh, so we're going to have the office, which I'm kind of half set up here. Again, all of this has to be taken out when we re-epoxy the floor, which is happening in probably about a week or so. Um, I'm also getting the 
panels made up. All of the walling in here is going to be purpose built and it's getting manufactured right now. It's all insulated panel. It's like foam insulated between um, stain, uh, stainless um, colour steel, they call it. So that's going to have all of it's getting proper made, some doors in here. If we go over here, you can look at the power, we've got alarms. I mean, again, look at this cable management, eh? it's just absolutely extraordinary. The guy who did all this um, was an engineer on the British Admiralty, and we do know um, the Brits have quite a history of building some pretty high quality ships. So, um, yeah, he really did a, a lot of work here. Again, three phases of 32 amps, three phase. Three phase is probably on a bit of the light side. Some of these other three phase sockets are. Uh, 20 amp which is a bit unfortunate would have liked a little bit more but can't complain the roof has got a lot of insulation in it so it's, it's really warm we've got an alarm my alarm's already gone for a few times during the night when um yeah i don't know something happens oh here's my wife and let's just go chat to my wife hey sweetheart Hi. you can't well, come here come here <laughs> don't cover your face here's my wifey she's happy i've got my own mushroom farm as well hey sweetheart <laughs> Yes. Oh look at this, look at this, look at this pretty little thing. Look at this pretty little number. Little number. Okay. Oh and what else we got? We got let me show you. So we've got some really cool stuff going on there. We've got extraordinary cable management. We've got insulation, we've got heat pumps, um, you know, double glazing. The house doesn't even have double glazing, but the workshop's got double glazing, so that's a positive. Let me show you our pump shed. Why is that so dark? How do I operate these cameras? We're gonna go in here. This is the pump shed. I'm gonna spin this camera around. So this is our pump shed in here. Um, you can see we've got power coming in here because we need more power, we've got data. We've got this big thing in here. All of that there controls all of these on the floor here. And our big filters, so uh, that's our bore, that's a 54 meter bore we call it, well it comes up here, servos, dump the first bit of water, it's dirty, runs it through the filters, out to the 30,000 litre tank, back in here, through this big pump here, irrigate, that's irrigation for the property, this one goes to the house through this um, pressure vessel here, pumps the water down to the house, um, so it's really really quite high tech, not high tech, for, for, for a New Zealand bore I'd say it's quite techy, um, he's really He's really done a lot of work in here on making sure the irrigation runs correctly. This all just, just controls the irrigation, which it's pumped by this giant um, pump here. So we're pretty happy about this. So you've seen the pump shed. That's where we're going to get all our water from the farm from. Uh, mushroom farming doesn't need a heck of a lot of water, which is pretty good. So it's not going to be a heck of a lot of waste. This is one of our paddocks. So that's our land out there. And there's another one out here which goes behind the house for a total of about four hectares. And it goes round, and you can see in the background up there those giant eucalyptus trees, those giant blue gums are on the corner of our property. So these paddocks are going to be planted out with mycorrhizal fungus species. We're looking at some saffron milk caps, some truffles, and then maybe some something along the lines of some bolets, um, if we can find the cultures for them. Not sure if we can. We can get truffle easy enough. So we're going to plant these paddocks out as well to give you that really authentic mushroom farm experience. We've got a lot of work to do here, especially over the next few months. We basically have to turn, you know, this empty workshop here into a functioning mushroom farm. So if you're interested in following and seeing what I do, just to do that, we're going to try and get a lot of videos out, a lot of videos specifically about what I'm doing to turn this into a farm. So make sure you guys subscribe, hit that bell button, like my videos, comment. I do try to answer most comments, sometimes not immediately, but maybe once in a while I'll go through and I'll really try to answer um, almost every comment that's made. So please leave a comment, ask a question if you'd like. Yeah, and let's just see... Um, Oh, and I, my goal is to get 250 kilos a week out of this. So it's, uh, the species we grow here aren't big yielding species. Unfortunately, our biosecurity laws prevent a lot of species import. So we don't have these big, you know, 100% biological efficiency yielders that you guys do in America. Our species tend to, you know, our oyster species just don't quite grow that well. They, don't not, they, they grow well, but they just don't yield a lot. My main... Uh, uh, Pulmonary species, is, biological efficiency is like 50%, right? So, you know, if we had other species, we could probably do 500 kilo a week, but we don't. So we're aiming for 250 kilos a week. And we'll go from there.
ourselves some mushrooms. Hopefully people want to eat them. <laughs>